Well, the first shipment of grain to leave Ukraine under a wartime deal appears to have ended up in the Syrian port of Tartus. That's according to recent satellite images. The arrival of cargo ship Razoni in Syria comes after the government in Kyiv praised the ship's initial departure from the port of Odessa as a sign that Ukraine could safely ship out its grain as global food shortages continue. The original final destination of the ship was said to be Lebanon after an initial inspection in Turkey. Now, this all comes as Russia is blaming saboteurs for explosions at one of its military bases in occupied Crimea. Ukraine did not confirm or deny responsibility for those explosions. The blasts on Tuesday engulfed an ammunitions depot at a military base in the north of the Crimean Peninsula, disrupting trains and forcing the evacuation of about 2,000 people from a nearby village. We are now seeing the official statement from the Russian Ministry of Defense that the cause of today's incidents was sabotage. The fewer opportunities the occupiers have to spread evil and kill Ukrainians, the sooner we will be able to end this war by liberating our land. And the queue to leave Crimea for Russia across the bridge these days proves that the absolute majority of citizens of the terrorist state already understand or at least feel that Crimea is not a place for them. Let's bring in Thomas Much, a journalist on the ground in Ukraine. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Let's discuss first this grain shipment and how it ended up in Syria. Yes, so uh, basically the biggest diplomatic effort in the war over the last few months has been to resolve the issue of the blocked grain shipments from Odessa and Ukraine's other southern ports. And it has only been just over the last couple of weeks that the first ships have been able to leave these ports. Now, apparently, the, the details are, are a bit unclear, but apparently it was supposed to be taken by a buyer in Lebanon who then blamed the shipment for being late and declined to deliver payment for it. I mean, I, I would have thought there would have been some pretty obvious reasons for why this was late. But and they looked for another buyer in the region and it was taken up by one in Syria, although, as I said, the details of that are still quite unclear. So while Ukraine is now able to ship grain out of its ports, it's shipping at about half the level that it was doing at this time last year. So will wartime negotiations for things like more grain shipments continue to happen if the ships aren't ending up where they need to be in the first place? Well, I think that at least the, the substantive issue of having a safe route that's uh, out of the Odessa ports and the southern Ukrainian ports is mostly uh, settled for now. But there are going to be a huge number of questions over whether the buyers will still accept shipments that are very, very late. I know, for instance, that there's one ship uh, apparently carrying humanitarian aid bound for Africa that was also able to go through. So people here are at least hopeful that this issue has at least been parked if not fully resolved. And Thomas, conflicting reports of what's happening on the ground in Crimea with these explosions, the Ukrainians not confirming or denying that they had any part of this and the Russians blaming saboteurs. But does that mean saboteurs within their own forces or are they referring to the Ukrainians? So what is the latest on the ground in occupied Crimea? So the, the blasts in Crimea are very, very notable for a number of reasons. First, they are quite a large psychological blow to the Russian forces that are there. If Crimea was sort of seen as territory that would either be considered off limits by Ukraine's international partners, or it was seen as something that Ukraine didn't have the capability to strike because it was too far away from current Ukrainian positions. And both of these have proven to be false. Um, now, as for the question of who did this. The Ukrainian government hasn't said anything officially, although there have been a large number of reports, so for instance, in the Wall Street Journal, that have said that this is mainly the work of Ukrainian special forces. Anything beyond that is, is pure conjecture. But the other effect that this has is that they are trying as best they can to uh, limit the ability of the Russians to resupply their forces in southern Ukraine, around in the Kherson, Zaporizhia, and Mykolaiv regions, where I currently am now, in preparation for what we've been hearing is going to be a counter-assault on Russian-occupied Ukrainian territory in the south. 
Thomas Much, a journalist on the ground in Ukraine, joining us this morning to break it all down. Thank you. Thank you for having me.